Hi everyone, this is Dayu from Ecom Ops. Today we're going to talk about the types of products that are particularly good to drop ship or ship or fulfill from China. A couple weeks back, I posted a video on the opposite, the top five products you should avoid shipping from China. So check that link below. I'll link it in the descriptions. And this is something that you should really be careful of because even if a product seems great, if you do not consider the fulfillment and supply chain part of it, uh, you're just not going to be able to scale as effectively with it. So let's get started. All right, so when you think about the right types of product from the supply chain perspective, what you want to be doing is that you want to minimize your cost of fulfillment and maximize your efficiency of shipping as well. So uh, you want to think about things like how easy it is to manage your inventory and stock uh, or have your supplier agent manage all that, uh, how easy it is to actually pack and fulfill uh, by your agent or fulfillment uh, center. And you want to think about how how to get the most efficient, cheap, fastest shipping possible, and you want to minimize your after sales issues, any kind of shipping issues or damage. Uh, but you want to also balance that out with making sure that whatever you're doing, you're still maintaining a high level perceived value and also a great unboxing experience. And this is where I want to remind everyone that a great product is not just something that seems like it's going to sell well or might be selling well actually, but a great product is something that you can scale up because a lot of products they might be fine at smaller volume however if you really want to scale to huge numbers seven eight figures you really want to consider the supply chain now before I talk about the types of products, I want to emphasize that I can't share precise products uh, because of client privacy. So I'm really talking about the main attributes of the types of products that are particularly good to ship uh, or manage supply chain out of China and maybe talk about a couple of examples as well. All right, so the first type of product that uh, you should try to go for is something that has a single SKU or as few SKUs as possible. SKUs as in variants, colors, sizes. This is really, really important because of inventory and stock management. Now, you as a dropshipper, whether you're actually uh, really doing dropshipping, like using a dropshipping platform, or actually taking the next, next step and working with someone like us where you actually pre-stock, you still have to be aware of the inventory management. If you sell a whole ton of SKUs, you know, 20 different sizes and color variations, what's going to happen is that your supplier is going to run out of stock or whoever you're working with to get stock for you, they're just gonna run out of stock. And even if you actually take the commitment to pre-stock, you're either gonna spend so much money to stock all of your items or you're going to face disruptions when certain SKUs of your product run out. And when that happens, you're gonna face delays and you're gonna cause your entire store to be affected because any kind of negative feedback affects your entire store and your brand. It's really simple actually because every single additional SKU of a product, it compounds the complexity of planning for that product. So unless you're like, you know, Walmart or something like that and you have a whole ton of storage space and crazy inventory management and actually the capital to put that stuff up front in terms of risk, then definitely try to sell uh, products with as few SKUs as possible. Now you wanna make sure though that the product actually makes sense to have very few SKUs. So for example, like, you know, don't sell clothing if, if you, if you want to avoid this, right? Because with clothing with so many sizes, there's just no way you can get away from a ton of SKUs. But one example is I actually have my uh, Logitech mouse here, right? Uh, this is obviously not a drop shipping product, but I love this mouse. It's a Logitech MX Master. And uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure there's only one color. There's only one SKU and I don't care, right? I mean, I don't care if this is going to be pink or whatever, you know, I just want the mouse. Now, if they actually offered five different colors, maybe I would have considered it, but 
like it doesn't really matter to me because this mouse is just functional in itself and I just want the black version. So, you know, it's a, it's a balance, right? Because obviously if your product needs to have a ton of SKUs, then you have to have a ton of SKUs. However, try to avoid those kind of products. Try to focus on product that just work with simple SKUs. A second attribute that you should be looking for in products from a supply chain perspective is you want to ideally sell products that don't really require a box to be protected or actually look nice when it's unboxed by your customer. The reason being is that China direct shipping is really sensitive to weight. A box uh, is gonna add a couple hundred grams, like even even more actually for a reasonable size cardboard box, that's hard enough, which means that that is going to be a lot more expensive for you. And if you don't need it, it's gonna save you a lot of money. So uh, think about products that don't really require that protection. Best example I think of right now is that my wife, you know, she recently bought these, you know, really nice Egyptian cotton towels. And they are really nice actually, and they're, they're quite expensive, but they just came in a nice bag. A towel doesn't need a box. Or jewelry, for example, you know, put it in a nice pouch, for example. Uh, however, again, you want to make sure that the product actually makes sense to not have a box. If I got that mouse, uh, in a bag, that would be a terrible unboxing experience. And you're gonna end up, you know, probably saving costs. However, you're not gonna have good feedback from your customers because uh, you wanna maintain that value as well. So ideally try to find products that don't require a box at all. If you do actually sell a product that requires some kind of box, you wanna make sure the box is like hard so that there does not require to be additional protection around it uh, because that is then going to add a lot of additional weight even just to protect the soft box. Because here's the thing, if you have a box that is not hard, international shipping is brutal, which means that if you don't put protection on it, you're gonna get creases in the box and no matter how good the product shows up and how functional it is, you're always gonna have customers who are going to give negative feedback because they think that it's a bad quality product because the unboxing experience sucks because the box is damaged. And now if you do actually protect it, you're going to need something like, you know, something like this. So this is called bubble column. So uh, you might have a soft box in here, but you need a whole layer of this bubble column to actually make sure that the box is even protected. And just look at this thing. I mean, it adds so much to weight, so much to the size, and this is gonna be way more expensive for you to ship. Then if you have just a hard box to begin with, the hard box is gonna add some weight. However, you know, this is, th this might actually end up being more expensive anyways and this is also not the perfect unboxing experience for your customers as well a third type or attributes of products that are particularly good are small light and dense products so let's start with light first actually so internet shipping is priced by weight so the lighter the product is the better it's going to be however you want it to be also small as well because if your product is too light, but it's too large in relation to the weight, you're gonna be hit with volume metric weight, and they're going to actually charge you based on the volume of the product as opposed to just the weight itself. So a pretty good example is maybe like a stuffed animal or a pillow, for example, relatively light, uh, but a lot larger. So you might be charged a lot more for it than just the weight itself, and it's just totally not worth it. You also want to look for denser products as well, uh, something that is just dense because it is more it is going to be harder to break uh, and generally speaking something that's a little bit denser is going to have higher perceived value by your customer as well the fourth thing you want to be looking for are products that are easily bundled or easily stackable or easily put together in a package this actually makes fulfillment a lot easier especially if you tend to sell a lot of multiples of it uh, because if it just kind of fits together very very nicely uh, then it's just so much easier to put into a package and make sure it's well protected and it looks nice as opposed to a bunch of odd shaped items uh, trying to 
be put together in a box or something like that. And uh, usually speaking, because of that, either us or you know whatever fulfillment agent that you're working with, uh, they're gonna give you more discounts on selling multiples, which means that you can give higher quantity discounts as well uh, and increase your AOV. And if you work the math out right, you're going to make more profits. And by the way, if you're doing something like this, ideally you actually sell in predefined packs, like a five pack or a 10 pack, 20 pack, for example, as opposed to just, just randomly letting your customer choose one or seven, whatever, right? So from a fulfillment standpoint, it actually makes it so much easier for us to say, okay, we just need to prepare five packs or 10 packs at a time. And then we're able to actually offer you bigger discounts on that because a five pack is essentially one unit. And we're just kind of planning for that as opposed to every single time we gotta count like, okay, there's four of them, there's three of them. And that actually takes a lot more time. And the other thing from a customer standpoint as well is that if a customer needs seven of something and you only sell in five packs or 10 packs, they're gonna buy 10 packs most of the time, or at least enough of the time that's actually going to make you more money if you bundle it together. But obviously like it only really makes sense if it's something that actually makes sense for you to sell bundle together and people are going to buy multiple packs of them. The fifth type of really great products you should be trying to find are products with consumable add-ons, uh, consumable bundles, upsells, and ideally the add-ons are also small, light, and stackable as well. Especially if the add-ons themselves are very light and they're sold in packs, then you can probably negotiate really good prices with your supplier on these add-ons, um, especially if they're upsold or cross-sold in the bundle with the main product. And also, if it actually is a consumable kind of add-on, then after your customer buys the main product, they actually need more of it, then there's actually a great chance for you to get more return purchases on the add-ons themselves. But the key though is that the add-on should be consumable. It just naturally wears out or naturally breaks, so it just makes sense for customers to actually buy more of it without getting upset because it just breaks or wears down. Now, and so actually I, I, I do have kind of a perfect uh, type of product example of that. And, and actually this product actually uh, covers, uh, I think pretty much all of these criteria. And this is the, the classic uh, men's razor or woman's razor. Uh, I mean, this is obviously not a drop shipping product. I think Gillette and like Dollar Shave Club, they already cornered the market already, but this is huge business. I mean, this makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, it is small, light, and dense. The packaging it comes with, it's like a hard plastic. It doesn't really require that much additional packaging. And you have these razors. I mean, it's the razor and blade model. You have these razor handles that, you know, that is, is, is almost worth nothing. I mean, like Dollar Shave Club even sells the handles themselves for free and they make money on the blades themselves. And the blades are consumable, right? Uh, you, you go through or, 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 you know, men go through these a lot. Uh, when they shave, I, I spent a fortune probably on these blades. They are consumable, the add-ons are light, they're stackable, and they are, you know, high perceived value by customers as well. I mean, I think something like uh, 10 of these or 12 of these cost something like 30, dollars or something even on Amazon so like you're just kind of churning through this all the time and Gillette or whatever company is constantly making money on you and and think about it I mean you don't need to have you know different SKUs of this it just works I mean like you know I don't really care about different colors I'm pretty sure that this version of Gillette Fusion really only has like you know one color or one size or whatever so obviously not a drop shipping product um, however you know, this is just an example of all these criteria that kind of fit together into one. So look, um, realistically, it's not gonna be the easiest thing for you to find products that are both gonna sell well, that are in high demand that you can market that fit all or even some of these criteria. But the point is that especially if you're a dropshipper and you're not tied to any specific niche, any specific type of product, then you should really put a little bit more thought and go the extra mile to think about, okay, not only what's going to market well, but what is actually going to be more efficient in terms of the supply chain. Because when you actually sell 
lower volumes, you're not gonna have that many issues. Your supplier has plenty of stock. It doesn't need to be that efficient. However, if you are really going to want to scale up to seven figures and you're selling like hundreds of thousands of units uh, per day, then like if you have too many SKUs, you're not gonna be able to stock fast enough. Uh, if the fulfillment process is not efficient, it's gonna be slow, it's gonna be more expensive. If you have to worry about shipping damage or paying a lot more for shipping, that eats into your margins as well. So these are things that early on, even when you start testing products, make sure you consider at least some of these criteria uh, and also watch my video about what products to avoid from a supply chain standpoint and use that as a guide as well to help with your product research. All right, everyone. Well, hope that was helpful. Please like, subscribe to this channel. And we do run a premium fulfillment agency, Ecom Ops. We'll link to it below. So check that out. Join our Facebook group as well. Uh, but this is Dayu from Ecom Ops. See you guys next time.